Hello, today we are going to look at uh, JWST, the James Webb Telescope. If you are a space enthusiast or if you are uh, listening to the space news recently, you might have already heard about this one. Uh, this is one of the most powerful, most complex and one of the most sophisticated telescope that the scientific community had ever built. And, and it took around 25 years for the scientists to complete this project. So um, let's go ahead and look into this. So it's James Webb Telescope, JWST. I'll, I'll leave a link to this page uh, below the like button and in the description box. So we'll see uh, what this JWST is about and what it consists of, how it functions and why is the hype, why is so much hype. So, um, the about section for the James Webb Telescope. Uh, James Webb Telescope is a joint venture by uh, NASA uh, and ESA, the European Space Agency, and CSA, the Canadian Space Agency. So, it started back in 1996, uh, which was planned to uh, actually release in 2007 uh, with an estimated cost of $500 million dollars. Uh, 500 million US dollars but uh, it took another 15 years more and it's planned to launch on uh, December 24th 2021 um, with uh, the overall cost of 10 billion US dollars imagine it's 10 billion US dollars and it took 25 years of time to uh, build and complete this project we'll see uh, why it took this much of time um, so it's going to launch on December 24th. Uh, here it was 22. Uh, I'll be correcting this one. Uh, the latest date is December 24th. Uh, it will be launched using an Arian 5 launch vehicle. And one more thing to talk about this name, the James Webb Space Telescope. It's named after uh, one of the NASA administrators uh, during the time period of 1961 to 1968, uh, James E. Webb. He played an integral role in Apollo space program, so his name um, is used for the space uh, telescope. So the other part, what it consists of. So you can think of uh, this James Webb telescope is uh, a satellite dish on a minivan, except that the satellite dish consists of uh, huge hexagonal mirrors covered with gold and they're 20 feet across and this minivan is of uh, size tennis coat and it is nothing but a the minivan is nothing but a sun shader so if you look closely into this one uh, the parts so it consists of uh, technically speaking it consists of OTE optical telescope element which consists of mirrors, uh, backplane, and all the other stuff. And then there is ISIM, Integrated Science Instrument Module, uh, which is the processing part, which consists of sensors, cameras, and all the processing part for um, the telescope. And yeah, you see here, it's a huge sunshade. And then few other instruments and solar arrays to power up the space telescope and do some uh, specific activities. So you can go through uh, this link over here or you can look at the YouTube video uh, about the JS JWST briefings on science instruments. Uh, you'll get more uh, details over that. So how it works and how it functions or where it works. So this is one of the interesting parts that you uh, want to listen to uh, because yeah, trust me, it will be very interesting. So this James Webb telescope, um, it's as I told you earlier, you can think it as like a satellite dish on a minivan, right? So uh, what will happen, the light from uh, the different uh, galaxies or the stars will fall into uh, this mirror which you can think of like a mouth uh, of the space telescope 
and once it falls into this mirror uh, they will be uh, focused on this particular path which is uh, another mirror and the complete light will be uh, transferred to uh, the center path which consists of different science modules uh, as you have seen that ISIM path it consists of uh, sensors and all that stuff to do the processing of the light what uh, it received so another thing uh, so apart from sensors and cameras uh, the difference uh, the light the wavelength you know uh, the wavelength light has uh, multiple wavelengths uh, so the specific path we can uh, uh, it's it falls under our visible spectrum there are a lot many other paths so this can collect from 0.6 uh, microns to 28.5 microns uh, that's the range of light it can collect so it'll far mostly it will fall mostly on the infrared uh, spectrum of the light so if you can stir this image over here so here uh, this is uh, so if you see this is the Hubble Space Telescope what we have and it covers uh, mostly the visible spectrum and near infrared spectrum if you see the JWST it covers the most of the infrared spectrums uh, because uh, what will happen uh, so when light travels from um, the huge uh, distance uh, the wavelength will decrease so initially it starts at small wavelength and it reach to visible spectrum and then the wavelength starts on decreasing so whatever the existing space telescopes we have they will not be able to catch this uh, wavelength so what we will miss we will miss the the distant galaxies or the stars which emits lights uh, millions of years ago those light reaches to us within this wavelength and our space telescopes were not able to will not be able to uh, capture this one uh, but this uh, JWST it can mostly look on the infrared light so that we can capture more uh, distant galaxies or stars uh, that light which travel from the uh, far uh, far away places so as it's working on uh, the infrared spectrum uh, one more thing we need to take uh, care of is uh, the heat okay so as as you see sun emits more light uh, right like the heat as well as when it starts functioning uh, the the instruments that are available on the space telescopes might also get like a lot of heat and if you don't cover this up okay so it'll start uh, it, it'll end up looking at its own heat and we will get the false recordings or mappings so to to identify this issue or to to uh, solve this issue uh, what scientists came up with is like this huge heat shield so it prevents the light uh, that's coming out from the sun um, and so you can see it covers with multiple layers okay and it will always try to maintain uh, the temperature at 50 Kelvin uh, which is around some minus 223 to 200 and minus 233 degrees Celsius you know uh, it's it's very low temperatures okay so uh, otherwise as I told it'll end up looking at its own radiation and we will get the false uh, readings from this one okay so the other thing what you want to look for is the position okay so so th this is positioned at one of the Lagrange points so you can you can um, visit this link to if you want more about uh, know, know more about the Lagrange point so we have four different Lagrange points available today um, when you consider uh, our Sun and Earth so this telescope will be placed at the uh, uh, L2 position if you look at this um, picture which I grabbed from um, the one of the videos one of the explainer videos so here is our earth um, and this is the moon that's revolving around the earth this is our sun and this is the Lagrange point the L2 uh, this Lagrange point this will keep uh, whatever the objects that that are present around this Lagrange point mostly they will be stable they will not uh, there will not be much attractions uh, because of the sun's gravitational force or the earth's gravitational force uh, they will mostly balance out each other and yeah the, the, the object that's present at this point 
will require less fuel um, and, and also there won't be any uh, you know uh, what I you know what I mean so there won't be much deviation so that's why the scientists have chosen this a uh, point but the only thing is this point is uh, a million miles far from the earth or uh, it's four times further than uh, the moon uh, the distance between the earth and moon so that is one of the um, one of the like taunting things about this telescope uh, because it's placed very far away from Earth. So if you want to do some repairs, which sometimes scientists will do um, for Hubble Space Telescope or something else, they, they'll not be able to do it as frequent as possible. Uh, and till now, I haven't heard anything that NASA planned to, to do the repair if, if any scenario comes up. So they're very strong that the scenario won't come up. Uh, and they expect the lifetime will be around 5 to 10 years. Uh, the, the working life, uh, like the fuel can last till 10 years and they, they, they are planning to do some experiments in the five years time period from the launch. And also uh, when it launches on December 24th, 2021, it'll take six months uh, to start working. That means it has to travel till the L2. It has to uh, start working. So one more thing, uh, one more uh, interesting thing that you want to know so as I told you, uh, this is of size of uh, a tennis court. The sanctuary is of size tennis court, and it weighs um, like um, so. It, it weighs around like fourteen thousand pounds. Uh, full size school bus. You can ask like how the scientists take this uh, into the space. Uh, so the answer, uh, it's like this space telescope can fold itself and can unfold whenever. Uh, when you pass some commands to that. So yeah, so this can, you can fold it like an origami if you're aware of. So all the mirrors and all the other parts will be folded and kept in the payload of uh, the rocket and it will be launched into the space. Once it's come, uh, once it's launched out of the payload and it will start like uh, opening up uh, to its full length and it will it'll travel till uh, the L2. This is how our JWST works. Once it travels to L2, it will rotate around that Lagrange point facing its sun shield towards Earth and Sun and uh, it will always be staying behind the Earth. Okay, and, and yeah, this is one of the videos like the, the link what I left here. This is one of the videos, uh, one of the best videos I found on uh, YouTube that explains the working uh, of the space telescope by one of the YouTubers as well as one of the uh, prominent person from NASA. You can take a look at this link. And finally, why is the hype? Why is the hype? So, yeah, like if you're looking at the news or even the normal news channels, they're they're talking about this JWST launch. So the obvious thing is it costs like 10 million US dollars. Uh, sorry, it's 10 billion US dollars. And also it took 25 years of time. Like, and, and, and if you hear from one of the, any of the scientists who worked on this, they will say definitely this is one of the complex projects, one of the toughest projects or that they have worked on. Uh, like you can think of 25 years when if, if some scientist started his career um, on JWST so they, they had completed 25 years of their work still uh, working on this JWST alone okay so why is the hype and why why um, like um, why uh, we're thinking this JWST can do a lot more things so the obvious thing is I told you earlier we can cover the infrared light uh, uh, in the light spectrum, in the spectrum, we can cover the infrared light, which means we can cover the distant galaxies or the distant stars. So you also know that um, the light that travel that much far, like if you say um, like a million miles far or like billion miles far, the light started long time back and it's reaching to this telescope now. That means we are looking back in the time to see uh, what what that star um, looked like during its birth or what is happening on some other galaxies 
uh, we are looking back in the time. So this this space telescope is uh, answering some of the oldest questions the astronomers or scientists are having from decades. Okay, um, so by looking at the light, uh, so yeah, some some people are saying like we can also find some light that started during the Big Bang. Okay, um, and and we can draw conclusions from that and some people yeah i don't want to go to uh, the aliens here but some people also uh, hoping to find some alien life that exists on different planets or different galaxies or different star systems so yeah this is certainly one of the most ambitious projects i can say which will help humanity to discover more about our universe uh, and what's our position in the universe, are we alone? And yeah, a lot of other things you'll come to know. Um, maybe while you're looking at this video, you might hear something that was discovered by the JWST or yeah, who knows. So you can also look at this uh, YouTube video here. I, have, I, I leave this link in this page. So this is about the science goals, what the scientific community or the astronomers trying to get out of the space telescope. Uh, they have a list of things to do. Um, and I heard uh, they will also be, the, the telescope will also be looking back into our solar system for some period of time, maybe some hundred hours. So to uh, look from Mars to uh, the outer planets to know more about them. Yeah, you can take a look at the science goals video. So yeah, this is, um, I mean, uh, everyone is aware of Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, it collects some of the beautiful pictures of those space. Uh, most of you might have used it as a wallpaper or if you see the mirror of Hubble Space Telescope is this much. So this covered uh, a space area and it gives so such a beautiful pictures. Think about the JWST, what it can do. The mirror of JWST is far, far more large than this Hubble Space Telescope. So yeah, some of you might can think of uh, more uh, beautiful pictures than that of Hubble that you can use as your wallpaper. So I leave uh, the references here, uh, which I referred to collect this data. Uh, you can go through these references available here. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. Um, we'll discuss on a different topic later. Bye.